Hey everybody, my name is Philip Walton. I work on Google Analytics and today I want to show you how you can use the Google Tag Assistant to debug your Analytics.js implementations. So if you're unfamiliar with Tag Assistant, it's a Chrome extension that allows you to go to a website that you're working on and then press the record button to start capturing uh, your interactions as you're navigating through the site. You can click on links and click on buttons, anything that is triggering Analytics.js calls and then once you stop recording, Tag Assistant will analyze those interactions and let you know if it finds any potential problems. It's a great tool for testing your site locally and making sure that everything's okay before you deploy it to production. So let's get started by installing Tag Assistant. And the easiest way is probably just to search for Tag Assistant in Google and that will bring up a link to the Chrome Web Store. And once you're there, you should see a button in the top right to add to Chrome. Click that button, it will ask you for permission, and then you should see an icon appear to the right of your address bar, which is a tag assistant icon. Once that's there, um, it'll ask you what tags you're interested in. For our case, we only care about Google Analytics. Um, and then once you have that, you can go to a site that you want to test, and then you can enable it for that site. So the example I want to show you today is actually uh, a mistake that we made in our implementation of the Query Explorer and we were kind of embarrassingly making this mistake in production for a while and we didn't notice and we only discovered it when we ran Tag Assistant on the Demos and Tools site. So let me kind of go ahead and show you what we were doing. You know, we were curious to see, uh, like if I refresh the page here, you'll see that it takes a little bit of time to load the Query Explorer. I mean, it's pretty quick on my connection, but for some people on slower connections, it's kind of slow and we wanted to see on average, how long that was taking for our users. So this is how we did that. We have um, a callback to on authorization success. And in this callback, we were sending a timing hit for user authorize, and we're using the performance.now method, which returns the amount of time that's elapsed since the page was initially requested. If you wanna see what that looks like in the network tab, we can just go ahead and uh, load the page and then kind of filter all these requests for just the measurement protocol hits. If we inspect this one and look down here, you'll see we have the UTC user value, UTV authorize, and then UTT 1540.6 and then a bunch of other stuff after the, the six. So, all that looked good to us. Uh, we were, you know, we deployed it in production. We were accepting the hits. And to be honest, we didn't even realize that we had made a mistake. Uh, let me show you what Tag Recorder tells us when we run it. So we open up Tag Recorder, we press record. Now I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the page again. So there's gonna be an initial page view hit. Then there's gonna be a timing hit. Uh, and now that the, the Query Explorer is loaded, we know that that's been, been sent. So we can stop recording. And let's check, take a look at the report. So if we click on the Google Analytics tab, we see immediately that there's this alert that tells us this hit had an invalid value. So if we scroll down, we can look at the hits in more detail and we see the page view hit, which started a new session. And then there's this unknown interaction hit. And here we get the error again saying this hit had an invalid value for the parameter UTT. So, um, how would you go about debugging this? Well, what I did was I went to the measurement protocol documentation, you know, and just checked on UTT and I immediately noticed that it says value type integer. And if you remember from the network tab, we were sending a value that was a flow, a fractional value. And so, you know, Google Analytics didn't like it and it was just dropping the hit. And, and we didn't even notice until Tag Recorder told us. Of course, this is a pretty easy fix. We just have to you know, round the value before we send it. And I'm gonna go ahead and implement that now. Let's try it one more time. So we record, refresh the page. It will send the new hit. Let's stop recording and let's see the new report. And as you can see, it says there are no alerts found. If we scroll down to the hits again, uh, now it correctly identifies this one as a timing hit you know, with a, a value of uh, 1,182 milliseconds, and we've rounded it so it's now a correct value. Uh, again, we only discovered this because Tag Assistant uh, told us that we were 
making this mistake. So thank you, Tag Assistant. The next example I want to show is cross-domain tracking. Cross-domain tracking is something we get a lot of questions about because while it's not necessarily complicated, it is easy to mess up the implementation. And it's not always obvious when you are messing up the implementation because you don't necessarily realize that you're doing it wrong until you start collecting data. And even then it's not always obvious. Well, fortunately, uh, Tag Assistant makes it really easy for us to ensure that our implementations are correct before we deploy them. So cross-domain tracking, um, if you're not familiar with it, here's a basic example. It is a site on source.com with a link to destination.com, which links back to source.com. And we want to track these as a single property in Google Analytics, even though they're on different domains. Now, historically, this has been tough because if you know anything about cookies, you know that cookies are not shared across domain. And Google Analytics uh, identifies unique users by storing a client ID in the cookie. So this has been tricky. Um, luckily, uh, there's a linker plugin that kind of solves this, but before I introduce that to you, I just want to show you what happens if we you know, let Tag Recorder take a look at this um, basic flow with no special configuration. So we're on source.com, refresh the page, go to destination.com, go back to source.com, stop recording, and we'll see what the report says. Now, as we expected, it said that this hit starts a new session, most likely because the client ID changed. And as I explained, that happens because cookies are not shared uh, across domain. So if we go back and look at this um, linker plugin here, you can see the documentation on the um, developers.google.com website. And it explains how to do cross-domain tracking. Uh, it makes it really easy to do with uh, almost no uh, manual configuration. All. The gist of it is that you copy this code here at the very bottom and you just paste it onto your pages and you just make, make sure and specify you know, all the domains you want to track here in the configuration option. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that into my source files, refresh the page, and let's go ahead and try this one more time. So let's turn on um, recording and refresh the page, go to destination.com. And if you look at the URL, you'll notice that the linker plugin attached this G, uh, underscore GA query parameter with some numbers after it. Now what that is, is essentially the source domain is passing the client ID to the destination domain so that they can sync up so that when they send the hits to Google Analytics, the same client ID is used for the same user. Then we go back to source.com. Again, it passes the client ID as well. So everything is always in sync. And let's see what kind of recording we get this time. Now, it looked like everything was right. The linker parameter was being properly applied, the client ID was being sent, and yet we're still getting an error. And it says, this hit starts a new session most likely because the campaign changed. So if we go down and look at the individual hits, we see the third one has the error. And if we inspect the page view itself, we see this campaign information. So Google Analytics thinks that a new campaign has started and the reason is because it's getting a new referral from destination.com. Now, we know that destination.com is part of the same property, but we have forgotten to tell Google Analytics that. So it doesn't know and so it thinks this is a new referral and then it starts a new session. Uh, if we had read the linker plugin documentation more closely, we would have seen a warning about this but you know it's easy to overlook and it's also easy to do incorrectly. The way that this works is you go into your property settings under tracking info and you click the refer ex referral exclusion list and you can just add destination.com to this list and now Google Analytics will ignore refers referrals from destination.com in addition to from source.com. So let's try doing this uh, one more time. Let's go ahead and refresh the page, close this out, um, actually start recording, refresh the page, go to destination, go back to source, and take a look at the report. And as you can see, no alerts were found. So this is great. This is exactly what we want. Uh, now we know and we are confident that our implementation is correct 
And if we deploy this implementation to production, we will be sending correct data to Google Analytics. Uh, if you look down at the individual hits, it kind of explains what everything is. Um, and you can see there's, in fact, one session, three different page loads, and it's all part of the same user because the client ID was shared across both domains. So this is where Tag Assistant really shines. It, is a lot, it allows us to, you know, to test our implementations locally and ensure that they are correct before we release them in production. So I recommend that everyone give Tag Assistant a try if you haven't checked it out yet. It's extremely useful. Uh, anyone can benefit from it no matter how experienced you are. Like I said, on our team, we found some mistakes that we had made and we've all been using Google Analytics for a long time. So if we can, if we can benefit from Tag Assistant, pretty much anybody can. So thanks for checking out the video. Check out Tag Assistant. And as always, let us know if you have any questions.